All right. So hello everyone. Uh, welcome to another AMA. And for this AMA, AMA, we have a project called Rain Check. And with us is the uh, founder of our Rain Check, uh, Cameron. So we're gonna do some. We're gonna ask him a few questions about Rain Check. Um, uh, it's similar to the other videos that we did AMAs, like a uh, like a DAO stack. So now we're gonna start by asking a few questions. All right. So. Can you give us an introduction of yourself and your project, uh, Cameron? Yeah, sure. Um, as you said, it's Cameron Wall. I'm, I'm the, one of the co-founder. There's me and another guy and CEO of Raincheck, which is a venture that's almost four years old now. Um, it's an online to offline commerce platform. Basically allows, the, the original platform allows people to discover things online and be notified offline if they're near a physical, store that might sell that product and we also integrate the payment as well so we're extending our platform into the loyalty space now so we can integrate loyalty into the whole process and it makes sense for us to use a cryptocurrency or digital currency based unit for loyalty which means it's transferable across multiple programs and that's why we've launched the rain token project um, to accomplish a decentralized system around loyalty. Thanks for that brief inter introduction, Cameron. All right, can you give us a, a, an introduction on uh, what RainCheck tries to solve in the current uh, problem or in traditional systems? Yeah, see, where we started from was, there's a lot of people online now shopping, um, 85, 90% of people that have access to the internet shop around online it's really quick you can go from brand to brand really fast you can discover things quite rapidly but most of the transactions still happen offline in a physical store um, in the us in australia it's about 90 percent of transactions still occur in physical stores although 90 percent of people shop online so there's no way of transcending all of the online discovery with what's actually purchased offline. And that's why we originally built the platform um, because people are discovering things online and when they're out shopping in the physical world, the only way they can remember what was there is maybe if they left things in the shopping cart on different tabs. And that's why shopping cart abandonment rates are 70 or 80% on most online sites because people are adding things to the carts but not, not converting them online. So we just thought there was a big need to have a, a digital platform that can actually save a universal wish list, if you like, of items and convert them in the store. And that led us to integrating the payment to know that something that was discovered online and was purchased in a physical store was purchased at the point of sale. So we integrated the payment into the process and we can do card linking where if you discover products, you can actually link them to a payment card and if you use that payment card to make a purchase, it triggers um, cash back or loyalty points or whatever it may be. And, you know, let's face it, loyalty hasn't changed in years. It's, it's sort of siloed. A lot of the programs don't communicate with each other. You might accumulate points on one, one program, but not enough to actually accumulate a proper reward. So we thought with the blockchain, because of its decentralized character, it's a perfect platform to be able to decentralize loyalty as well. And that, that's led us to launching the, the RAIN token as a unit of value in loyalty. And we're actually launching that on the Stellar blockchain, which is a very strong and solid blockchain with really fast transaction speeds at almost zero cost. So it's a lot better than Ethereum and that's why we decided to do it. All right, thanks for that, uh, Cameron. It's interesting that you point out that uh, what you guys are trying to focus on is the decentralized payment for Raincheck. So uh, can you give us a broad overview on how, on the architecture of the, um, of the Raincheck platform? So you're gonna have your, the core Raincheck platform and uh, is, the, is the loyalty and rewards platform gonna be a part of that? So how will that work? How does that yeah. look? Yes, it will be. I mean, the, the last 12 months has been spent on integrating the payments with, with um, payment cards. So that's your Visa, MasterCard, American Express. Uh, it, meant, it meant integrating into those card schemes. So when a card is used to make a payment, it triggers the transaction with the payment 
scheme, Rails, um, we capture that transaction. So we're our, we actually have patents uh, filed in 42 countries and our patent is on doing SKU level matching, in other words, product level. So most card linking or cashback offers are usually at merchant level. In other words, you might see an offer where if you spend $400 or $200 at a certain merchant, you might get $40 cashback or something. So we wanted to take that further to actually narrow that down to a product level. So not only if you shop at that retail brand, but if you actually buy a certain product there, you can get a special offer. Um, so it's just a natural progression from Raincheck to be able to uh, integrate the payments. And then obviously all these offers, loyalty reward points and cashback. So once we opened that up, it meant that there's an opportunity for us to do something in loyalty as well. So, you know, you might shop at 20 different retail brands and you can, the underlying loyalty platform could be the same for all of them. In other words, if I earn points at one brand, they're, they're actually compatible at another brand as well. So that's what people want. They want to be able to shop at multiple brands and earn the same unit of loyalty points so that you can accumulate them, trade them, give them to friends and family and, and, use, and use them properly. So that's why it made sense to, to go into loyalty as well um, to extend our existing platform into that area. All right, thanks, uh, thanks, Cameron. Uh, it seems that uh, what your main uh, value proposition is that customers can can sort of like uh, use their loyalty and rewards in a in a variety of uh, as you call it silos, right? You could integrate it to make it like a a platform, right? So that users can uh, trade it; it's tradable. Uh, that that's that's definitely one of the strong points of your projects. Uh, with regards to another strong point which uh, is often cited in your white paper is that RainCheck uh, plans to be the end-to-end -end data points for bridging the online to offline world, right? And um, can we ask what kind of uh, offline data do you capture and how do you capture it in your, in your, in your platform? Um, well, we we'll start with the online data, we, we, we actually we have over a hundred data points, but the main ones are, we know which products people are actually rain checking from, from websites. So we know which ones they're saving or, or saving into a list, if you like. So these are, these are products that people are actually liking. We have a slight profile on the users as well. Um, there's obviously a browser extension, there's a mobile app as well. So we get a little bit of data on the user side, but as you say, when it comes offline, what do we grab? Most people, most brands will spend a lot of money on digital marketing because it's the way to do things these days. You've got social media, you've got SEO, display advertising, blogs. There's a lot of different online methods to convert people to these e-com sites. But once they're there and they look around, you've converted them, you've spent money on advertising, you get them there and they look around, they look at products and then they leave the website. Where did they go? What, what happened to them? Did they go to one of my stores? No one knows. So we try and pick up that, that journey as well offline which means that if they've linked their card, we use, um, for location services, for example, we use geofencing technology. We've geofenced pretty much most shopping precincts, shopping malls and airports in the world uh, at about 150 metre radius. So we know that you're at these locations and then we go out and find out what brands might be at those locations. And then we match that with any product data you may have from any of those brands. So we match all of that. We match the location visits through geofencing and then also on the purchase and the card linking, we can actually grab the data points around the purchase of the product as well. So effectively, the main data that we're giving retail brands, which they've never been able to see before, is online to offline product sales attribution. In other words, a digital ad triggered the interest, which resulted in a sale in a physical store maybe a week later. So it's the online to offline is the is the really important data there. Excellent, thanks for the explanation. It's more concise uh, and more clear in us understanding the business process. It's interesting you talk about uh, a lot of data points and the offline data points so that uh, uh, the brands can have a greater understanding on their customers, right? So uh, we also look at the white paper and there is mentions of artificial intelligence. So that is definitely on the mix as well, right? Yeah. Um, artificial, we, we're a partner, we're a world partner with IBM. So we, we use, uh, IBM have a 
supercomputer called Watson. You may have heard of it. It's beaten people at um, sort of <laughs> games and things like that. Um, it's cognitive computing, and they've got some very good APIs and tools around Watson. Um, image recognition, voice recognition, uh, intent. We, we access a lot of those APIs, and we actually feed those data points I was talking about into Watson, and it analyzes the data. Watson basically learns about shopping, learns about brands, learns about styles, colors, and it sort of learns as it goes along, and it learns off the data you can feed into it. Um, AI or artificial intelligence is useless without proper machine learning algorithms. I think a lot of people miss this, but you need to set up the machine learning algorithms first to be able to make sure that the machine's learning what it's supposed to be learning in order for it to produce the artificial intelligence needed. And I think most people talk about AI, but forget about the machine learning part. So we work very closely on IBM. There's one of the, one of the applications we have in beta at the moment, it's called Match It, which means that if I rain check a red pair of shoes, for example, into my list, I can push a button, it'll, rain check will go out and it'll match, it'll find all shoes that are red that are in a similar style from whatever brands and therefore you can then compare that with other, other shoes that are similar without physically having to go and search for them. The, the um, artificial intelligence will go and find it for you. That, that sounds pretty cool because it will definitely streamline the consumer experience. So really make uh, online shopping less of hassle and much more, uh, much more efficient. Right, so uh, moving on to the next question, right? So looking at the white paper, there is, it's obvious that there is a distinction between uh, your payment uh, processing and which you're going to decentralize via uh, the, the rewards platform and your core, your core platform, which is run under uh, an AWS server, which we all know is centralized. So is there any, uh, any plans in the future in which you guys are going to transit that core, core server into a decentralized one, perhaps? Yeah, perhaps. Um, definitely. I mean, at the moment, we're a, we're a venture that's probably almost four years old now. We've, we've built out on AWS because it, it makes sense. We had, a, um, we had an agreement, a, a startup agreement with Amazon at the beginning, which they awarded us, which was quite cool. Um, it just makes sense for us to build on that platform because of all the tools that are available. Once we start scaling, we will look at definitely um, moving into a decentralized environment. We, as I said before, a lot of our power in the decentralized platform comes from Stellar. Stellar is very important um, protocol. Um, they have the Horizon and Core server, which we can obviously leverage the decentralized components of that computer system as well. So yeah, it, it's a bit of a hybrid mix between, you know, the decentralized servers that Stellar's running and their anchor nodes are global, obviously, and then we'll also have services running on AWS as well. Okay, thanks for that, Cameron. Uh, about the tokenization process, right? So let me ask a question. Will the tokenization uh, uh, impair the, your relationship with uh, existing payment card processes or banks, right? Because uh, how will the relationship work? Because we can see that banks are not really keen on cryptocurrencies, right? <laughs> no, they're not. They're, um, they're, it's, a, it's a bit of a threat to them, depending on how they look at it. Um, the, Stellar, the Stellar blockchain or the Stellar protocol, today it can do a cross-border peer-to-peer transaction on an open protocol in three to five seconds at almost zero cost, okay? So therefore, if you look at remittance or international payments, I might come from um, a US dollar off to a UK pound or into um, a you know, Filipino currency, whatever. It doesn't matter. It travels across the stellar rails and it can convert on the fly to the best exchange rate it can find at the time. It's really quick. Um, it's a fantastic network. The Consensus algorithm that it uses is, is fantastic. Um, it's not proof of work. It's not even proof of stake. It's a, it's a really slick way of reaching consensus. Um, I think that proof of proof of work, which is like um, Bitcoin and Ethereum, is at the moment, is is yeah, it serves its purpose to, to to get the blockchain or Bitcoin going. But 
as far as building decentralised applications on it, it's, um, you know, realistically, you can't build a project on Ethereum. I know it's a good platform to raise money on, but as far as building anything, it probably will not work, especially if it's got transactional capabilities involved in it because no one's going to sit there and wait seven minutes, 12 minutes an hour for a transaction to happen in retail. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely a, a strong component of our platform. We looked at all the different ways we could have built a decentralised loyalty system and there was no choice other than Stellar at the time. Yeah, it's interesting that you pointed out that because uh, having a look at your closest competitors and you have that on your white paper as well, they are built on the Ethereum blockchain, right? And obviously, in terms of scalability, uh, there are other blockchains which can, which can process a higher number of uh, transactions and that's why you guys chose Stellar Network. So uh, going back to the comparison of competitors, right? Looking at uh, your competitors, what are, what are the, besides scalability, besides uh, transactions, uh, throughput. What are the what are the other elements which you guys stand out uh, with regards to your closest competitors? Well, I mean, to be honest, any blockchain decentralized application that anyone's building at the moment is going to have a, a hard time getting traction because the market's not there yet. Like it reminds me back in the late nineties when the internet was booming. You know, there was some fantastic ideas. There was really good dot com sites coming out of everywhere in the world and they were raising a lot of money. It's very similar to, to how it is now. And, you know, the dot-com bubble burst in 2000 because if there wasn't anything wrong with the applications or anything being built. The problem was there wasn't, a, there was no one on the internet. There wasn't enough market on the internet. Whereas with the blockchain, it's different. It's, it's, it's using the internet protocol for the transport layer. So everyone's on the internet now anyway. Um, so it just makes, sense that it's a you know i know there's a lot of projects being done on the blockchain and a lot of them will probably fail it's not that they'll fail because there was something wrong with the project but it'll fail because the uptake for the actual application will take time i mean using cryptocurrency as a loyalty exchange a lot of people will get that um, and a lot of people probably will start using it but you know in order for it to use to reach a network effect will take some time we're rain check strong. It's more like a reverse ICO. We already have a core business that solves quite a few problems in, in retail. Nothing to do with the blockchain. We're actually accumulating retail customers and we're getting a lot of people on with the card link loyalty and everything. We're building up a really good base in that respect. When we get to the decentralized layer and start producing um, the blockchain solution on loyalty, it'll be a natural progression for them to, to join into that. It's not our sole value proposition where a lot of our competitors, that's all they have is, is, is what they're building. And I think they'll struggle and they are struggling at trying to get users on. As many as you can get users on, they're leaving. So there's a lot of churn rate you'll find. Thanks for that. Right. And looking at uh, analyzing your company, uh, sorry, uh, analyzing rain check, it's obvious that you guys have uh, more traction than most other ICOs because you guys started four years ago and you guys already have a running business on a sustainable and viable model, right? Uh, so that's, in summary, that is what stands out against, uh, uh, that what RainCheck stands out against its competitors, right? Because you guys are already in the space and you guys already know uh, what works and what doesn't, right? So, and one thing that uh, we, I looked at your white paper and I saw that uh, RainCheck is uh, using Stripe as the payment gateway on the, mo on the mobile app, right? And it states on the white paper that you guys are working closely with Stripe to develop a proxy layer based on the Stripe payment gateway, right? So are you guys working like literally directly with them at the moment? Yeah, we've, we've been working with Stripe for probably a year and a half now. We, Stripe payment gateway is built into the, app, the mobile apps at the moment. Um, the reason we chose Stripe was because, uh, you know, we looked at Braintree and a few others, but Stripe had split payments available, uh, whereas Braintree didn't where we were. So we needed to split the payment between the retail brand, ourselves, and of course, the, the you know, the, the user, if you like. So there needed to be a split done in the payments as soon as a transaction happened and, and Stripe were able to offer that. Their, um, their API... Their API and the documentation is very good. Their support is really good. Um, funnily enough, Stripe was one of the early investors in Stellar. 
at the beginning. They invested a few million dollars into Stellar. I think they turned that into about $600 million, but they were the token. So they, they're a backer of uh, Stellar Protocol as well. And um, it just all fits in. Obviously, we need a needed a payment gateway that, that can work right now cross-border, and that's why we chose Stripe. But um, we will continue to work with Stripe where we need to, definitely. All right, thanks for that. Uh, okay, let's move on into the token, the token utilities, right? Let's uh, talk about your tokens, right? So if I'm the token holder of your RAIN uh, token, so what, what does that entitle me to? What can I use the tokens for? What's the purpose of the tokens? Um, you can accumulate the tokens from doing, from even just rain checking items or visiting stores, making a purchase using an enrolled card. So it's really just the normal shopping experience, but doing it on the rain check platform enables you to accumulate the rain tokens. Um, those rain tokens can be accumulated and they can be used at the beginning. They'll be used to cash in for uh, digital gift cards from most brands or you can transfer the points to friends and family. Um, you can accumulate points from multiple brands into one into, into your wallet. Um, the, the RAIN tokens will be traded from day one of our ICO on three different exchanges. There's um, Stellar Term, Stellar Port, Stellar X, all open exchanges. The good thing about Stellar X as an exchange is fantastic because there is no fees. Um, it's not centralised, which, you know, you've got Bitfinex, you've got you've got a lot of different centralized exchanges doing cryptocurrency at the moment, which sort of is a, is a little bit silly because, you know, this is a whole decentralized economy we live in, but these exchanges are centralized and some of them are being hacked and, you know, you, you, you're not holding the private keys in a lot of cases, so it doesn't make sense. But um, you'll be able to trade crypto to crypto or crypto to anything, really, from the Stellar X exchange from day one, which is good for people that are holding the coins. You can exchange them straight away. Um, you don't have to wait for us to be listed onto an exchange. So, um, yeah, you'll be able to do quite a few things from day one. You'll be able to trade them, accumulate them, um, share them, use them to possibly um, pay for goods and services once accepted by different retailers. Um, we'll probably buy back a lot of the tokens from our other side of the business and burn those so we can create some sort of, um, you know, a, a good ecosystem and policy on the token the economics, if you like. Yes, uh, one of the uh, one of the unique point is that you guys uh, will employ a burning mechanism, which would obviously uh, create long term value for the uh, for the for the token holders, right? So, is there any as in have you guys outlined any uh, details on the token burning mechanisms? Um, not into finer details just yet, but we what we will do is off our SaaS based business, um, we'll use some of the income that comes in from that side of the business to actually buy the tokens ourselves and those ones that we do buy will burn back out so that it creates um, a bit more scarcity in the token so that the value can hold if not go up so there is a rewards pool as well which of uh, tokens which we will release to basically stimulate our participation by retail brands in the ecosystem as well so it's just a balance of how you control that it's not just um dump as many as you can so it, it's it's really important for us to to keep this ecosystem of stellar based crypto going so and, and and working so it actually creates really good value for people okay uh with when we look at the token allocation of the white paper right with the the for for the ico participants for those who are going to invest in uh, in range check ico uh, only 35% of the entire allocation is going to the uh, participants in the crowd sale, right? Uh, that is relative to other projects. That is uh, that is quite on the low end because uh, some people might take issue on that because it is it seems really centralized that you guys are holding up uh, or controlling most of the token supply, right? So uh, can you tell us more on how you, you plan to mitigate that? Well... You know, we're here for the long haul. We want to be around for a while. We don't. It's it's not just we're not just holding an ICO to raise money, like quite a few in, on Ethereum. And in that case, yeah, sure, dump dump all the tokens. But then again, how are you gonna how are you gonna 
stimulate and fuel your business model later on if you don't have if you can't you know any any um, economy in the world does that they stimulate the economy by using monetary or fiscal policy and this is what we need to keep ourselves open to do those all the tokens will be frozen anyway for different periods of time and people will will be notified when there's going to be an allocation and that may be if we're bringing more brands on we might use them we might offer them tokens to be able to fuel um, different offers and things that they might be making on the network which is only going to benefit the users as well and stimulate it it's not like we're dumping or holding the tokens and dumping them so it's it's if you if you have a look at how how the economics work that's why we're doing it um, I mean if you're serious about stimulating and your own ecosystem of tokens, it's probably the way you need to do it. I, I know that not everyone puts everything on the market and they're probably a lot higher than us, but you know, if you have a look at those ICOs that have gone before us and seen what they've done, then you have a look at what they're doing. They're probably in a bit of trouble because they can't stimulate anything anymore. All right, so with greater control comes greater uh, uh, power in stimulating your, your, the, the range of economy. So, all right. So, is that is that uh, is that uh, concise? That summary? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, there'll be more and more. We'll be releasing more, uh, um, more and more documentation as the process goes through. There's a lot of um, things that we're releasing and some announcements that they were making over the next few weeks as well. So okay. keep an eye on it. Yeah. That sounds good. All right. So let's move on to the team. Right. So uh, tell us a bit of. Uh, of your team and how many are working uh, full time on this at the moment? Uh, at the moment, there's probably about 12, 10, 12 people working on it full time. Um, there's, we have uh, about five, six developers ma mainly working on the wallet project at the moment. Um, there's obviously our normal business as usual going on with Raincheck as well, so it's not just the ICO. Um, there's myself, my co-founder, Will, who's um, he's an Australian Chinese guy, but he's very good. We've worked on a lot of projects together. Um, there's quite a few people working on the community management as well. Um, there's obviously marketing and business development going on as well. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of people doing a lot of different things at the moment. And because it's a global uh, project, there's, you know, there's a lot of different hours and different times of the day that things are happening. So after the ICO, right, do you plan to uh, hire more people in your team? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, we'll definitely hire more people. If there's people that we've got sitting, waiting to come on anyway, but um, there's some really cool people that are coming on to the project. There's, we're making an announcement very soon. We're acquiring 50% of another company, which does global duty-free, um, uses our platform in the duty-free market. They're making some announcements with Panasonic, Avionics, Airbus, uh, Lufthansa, and a few other big brands. So um, there's a lot of big announcements coming anyway. Because we, we obviously we're in retail, but we also want to move into the travel sector. And obviously the travel and retail together um, involves duty-free sitting in the middle. So there's a lot of things about to be announced. Excellent. So... Uh, that was actually one of the next questions that we were about to ask about uh, whether you guys have a uh, have a list of prominent partners or partners that you guys are working with or currently in the works at the moment. Can you reveal them or we have to wait for the official announcement? Um, but, well, I can release them when the time's right. I mean, Skybars will be announced pretty soon. There's, um, there's we, it, You'll see on the white paper, there's quite a few partners we already have, um, which we've built over the last three years. Um, but there'll be a lot more strategic partners, especially in the payment space. Um, definitely in the payment space, there's some big announcements about to come out as well. All right, thanks for that. Now we'll move on to uh, the last two segments, right, which is on the traction, on the traction of your, of your business and the product, right? So um, obviously RainCheck was established in 2014, and since then you guys have launched a variety of products like uh, app, uh, mobile applications and uh, browser extensions, right? Can you tell us about the traction so far? Do you have a, a aggregated number of uh, users in your database? Yeah, we've got, um, well, what we did was in, we, we formed the company in November of 2014. So it was basically at the end of the year, 
2015, we started building a prototype of what we thought, and a lot of it was filing patents, our initial patents. Um, we got to 2016, I think, and we launched a pilot. Uh, that's when we launched the iOS app and later on the Android version of the app as well. And at that point, what we were doing was going direct to retailers and they're integrating our solution directly into their e-com sites. Um, we ran that pilot for about, I think, six to eight weeks. We, I think we um, did $2 million worth of rain check items. So it, it went quite well, but then we realised that what we wanted to do is integrate the payments side as well. So we basically held back on promoting the apps or the platform out any further. It's quite expensive to market an app. I don't know if you've ever done it, but it's very expensive um, if you want to remain number one or if you want to really drive your app. So we decided that we didn't really want to concentrate too much on the app and be more of a technology play on the back end. So this is why we now drive other apps like Skybuys. They use our platform to drive a lot of different apps now, not just our own. There is the RainCheck app and it's in the market. And there's probably five, 6,000 users on the RainCheck app, but we don't promote that heavily. It's just, it just sits there. It's mainly for the, the purpose of people that want to use it. But what we'll be releasing later in the year is a, mar a new marketplace, and that'll be online. It'll also be available through the mobile as well. So that'll have a marketplace full of different offers that are all card linked as well, and also access to digital uh, gift cards from a lot of multiple brands. So. The normal rain check capability will probably still be built in there, but we're, we're more of a technology company building out the back end, and that's what we've concentrated on building over the last couple of years. So it's not so much of spending money and driving the, the, retail or the end user app. All right, okay, thanks for that, because that is a very important point that you raised, because uh, looking at the, having an analysis of the traction on the retail end, uh, as you said, five to 6,000 users, that, that is uh, comparatively at the low end, but you said that you are focused more on the back end, on the technological play uh, with, uh, 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 correct me if I'm wrong, with more business to business side rather than uh, consumer end. So I think that's very important to to for for the viewers to understand about uh rain check uh rain check uh platform. All right. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. So uh, can you tell us more on, on how are you guys guys gonna uh, the go to market strategy, right? Because you guys are a technology company and you want to focus on the uh, uh on uh marketing or partnerships with other uh, brands or uh, retailers, right? Yeah, exactly. I think the, the go-to-market plan, once we've got everything in place, it's, it's quite an expensive exercise to integrate with the likes of Visa and MasterCard. They're, they're big projects and it takes, takes quite a bit of time because they're, they're not from our side, but they're just a lot slower to work with in integration. So once we have the card linking on all three networks, we'll have, um, we'll have a competitive edge on a lot of people because no one's really offering it at that point. We're also built the whole API ecosystem around that. So we can run programs with multiple brands, multiple merchants under each brand. Um, it'll open up a lot of capability and that's going to be the difference between us and everyone else because no one else will be offering what we are. So um, it'll be quite easy for us to attract brands in that respect. Um, and then obviously that'll lead to a lot of the other capabilities that we originally built at the beginning. So, um, you know, it's a matter of, getting to the point of closing the loop from the discovery of a product to actually purchasing the product, whether it's online or offline and every, all the data points in between. So it's been a, a quite a hard road to actually build and join that whole loop together, but it's about to probably be ready in the fourth quarter this year, in the next couple of months. And then we'll have a go to market plan probably after the Christmas break when it's a bit quieter and probably go to market um, in February and that'll be, Australia, New Zealand, into Asia, and probably the UK as well. Thank you for that insight because uh, that wasn't mentioned in the white paper. So now we're aware of the, uh, in general, the go-to-market plan. All right. So, uh, and you guys, uh, and it's interesting that at the, uh, at the onset, you mentioned about the patents, right? And patents is actually a very, uh, what you call it, a very advantageous to any company, right? Because you guys have exclusive uh, rights to your own technology, right? So where are you guys on the patent uh, process? Right now it's patent pending, right? Yeah, it's been, um, 
probably two and a half years process so far with patents. Uh, they've got to the point now where we've registered the patent in 42 countries, which is uh, Australia, New Zealand, USA, China, the European Union, which is 38 countries, I think, in, in the European Union. Um, anyway, there's 42 countries in all together. So now they've been submitted to all those countries and that was just in the last couple of months. So it'll probably go for another four, few months towards the end of the year. We'll re go to the next stage, but it's all on track. It's been quite expensive and very time consuming, but it is very important. Um, if, if you're building some cool technology and you want to actually be able to differentiate yourself and obviously be attractive to possibly an exit at some point um, with a larger company, someone maybe like Google or whoever, you really need to have your IP in order. Um, it's very important. So it's always been important for us to, to do that. And this isn't my first venture. I've had probably six different tech ventures. And I, you know, I do know that IP is important and we've filed patents before in those companies as well. Excellent. And I'm sure those interested in WinCheck would find that uh, the, uh, this is extremely important for any business to have uh, like a patent on their new technology. Right? Yeah. All right. So uh, second last question, right? Second last question. So do you think that the merchants in the industry that you guys are focusing uh, are equipped on the tech end Right to, uh, for example, and what uh, you guys wrote on the white paper when it comes to uh, defining their own value uh, and policy for loyalty points uh, transfer through interacting with smart contract functionality. Do you think, do you think that uh, this uh, capabilities is is ready at the moment for merchants to engage on? No, um, the way that the landscape looks at the moment is there's the big guys. You've got your, well, you've got your airlines, you've got your big grocery retailers. These guys have loyalty programs, but they're very walled gardened. So they sort of look after their own points. They're not interested in, in anything else. But there's the big long tail, if you like. I mean, there's some major retailers all the way down to smaller ones. They have no loyalty program whatsoever. They want to have one, but they feel that it's a capex problem. It's, uh, it's quite a bit of money to probably implement their own. Plus, they'd need people to run it. So they, they're, not, they're a bit hesitant in, in, in launching one, but they all want to. So we're going to offer the loyalty platform as a service. So it's a bit like loyalty as a service, which I think is mentioned in the white paper. And this enables retail brands of any size to be able to plug into our platform and offer immediately be able to offer um, reward points, cash back and offers directly linked to the payment cards that they already have. So rather than issuing a loyalty card, your loyalty card becomes your payment card and it's linked to multiple loyalty programs and therefore forming an open coalition of linked loyalty brands all under the one currency, if you like, digital currency. And that's the way we see it. And if, if I'm a retail brand out there and I've got 40 stores and I've got an online presence and I can see Raincheck as an option, I can just plug in and start offering loyalty points, cash back, whatever I want to my customers pretty quickly. I think that's a really good value proposition um, and then as they all join together, it'll form a much bigger loyalty coalition than some of the big guys and the airlines that are already out there at the moment. Thanks for that. That, that is a very interesting uh, proposition and hopefully uh, you guys will achieve that goal, all right? And lastly, are there any incentive for stakeholders to participate or develop the platform? Yeah, sure. We... Um, there is APIs and, and software development kits that will be available for other developers. We just have to wait till we get um, the wallet app out. So what that'll mean is that if someone wants to, as I said before, produce their own app or app wallet, they can definitely utilize our existing technology and back onto the Stellar blockchain um, and, and make use of all of the, the wonderful features that that, that, that has. Um, so that's, that's, that's fine as well. I mean, any developer can, can probably go to GitHub and have a look at what we've got there when it's ready and they can improve the code if they wish. But there's a lot of stuff we want to do in the distributed ledger, um, not just around loyalty, even around payments, e-com payments. There's a lot of opportunity there. I mean, uh, most people that are purchasing e-commerce are doing it cross-border now anyway. So why, you know, if you're paying, if you're paying a shipping fee and you're paying 3% for a purchase, why not not pay any fee at all, you know? And, that's, that's the way we see it. So it's a matter of removing these middlemen, if you like, or payment gateways that shouldn't really be there. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity, definitely. 
Thanks for that, Cameron. I, and I think uh, I I do agree that you guys are uh, really solving a huge problem in uh, in in the online to offline uh, arena. And we from the Master the Crypto thing, we wish you all the best for your project. Uh, thank you for spending time again uh, and answering the questions that we have for you. Uh, and for our viewers, uh, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel as well as. Uh, make sure that you go to our website masterdecrypto.com to have a look at the rain check analysis that we just did and this uh, video I made is also going to be integrated into that article both in the youtube and as well as uh, our review on rain check so once again uh, thank you for standing by and thank you very much uh, cameron uh, for your time and we do hope uh, that you guys will be successful in your endeavor and please do uh, give us any updates if you guys have any new uh, developments uh, with regards to your project all right yeah, thanks, Leslie. Thanks for the time. Pleasure. Goodbye.